Great. Thanks for the intro, Tim, and glad to be back. So I think uh, what I want to touch on today is really some of the exciting news that's been happening at Novonix over really the, even the past 60 days. So I will give a brief introduction to the company. I've, I've spoken in these before, so hopefully some people are familiar. Uh, we're focused in the battery sector, and, and which is gaining just unbelievable traction now. And just in the last two months or so, we've really been focused on expanding our research and development team ecosystem. Uh, we've recently announced that Professor Jeff Don, uh, who's currently been working with Tesla for the past five years, is joining us as a chief scientific advisor. We've renewed our sponsorship with another professor at that university, which has already yielded great intellectual property that we're commercializing. We're continuing to innovate in our technology programs, strategic relationships around some of our key technologies for our graphite business, as well as support from the US Department of Energy for some of our next generation technology programs. And as I talk about the company in a minute, we're focused on developing new scalable businesses, just as we have with our first project. And we'll, we've given an update around our, our cathode technology. And to Tim's point, uh, just this morning, released our partnership with Amera Technologies to design, develop, and manufacture uh, residential energy storage systems for community microgrids. So if we jump to the next slide, we'll take a look at the company structure, which has our ASX listed company which essentially holds our operating assets, which are North American based. At the center of the company is our battery technology business. This was founded on the back of research and development technology to rapidly accelerate evaluation cycles in new materials and new battery chemistries from months or years down to weeks. And we use that as a core technology in developing and rapidly commercializing new technologies. We work with the local university on, on development contracts. We provide testing and design and prototyping services on our in-house battery assembly line. And we have customers in over 15 countries. The first commercial scale entity that spun out of this ecosystem was our pure graphite business. Uh, we started in 2017. And in that time, it's become the first contracted supplier of premium synthetic graphite used in electric vehicles and energy storage systems within the United States. We have a con conditional sales contract with Samsung SDI, which will start being delivered on this year. And it's well an MLU to uh, evaluate our production samples from our Gen 2 line, which I'll speak about uh, with Sanyo. And most recently, we've announced setting up our new cathode division which is leveraging some of our technology that we developed in partnership with the university. Uh, we filed patent applications around these technologies to make high performance, high nickel, single crystal and polycrystalline cathode materials at much lower cost structures. So when we look at our company, we are focused on critical research and development programs that will lead to large scale entities. And as I said, Pure Graphite being the first one of those on the next slide, I'll just speak briefly about where that is at. You know, we, we normally spend a lot of time on Pure Graphite as our main uh, commercial entity now. It's in a ramp up phase to deploy our 2000 ton plant this year, uh, which will be supplying our Samsung contract and starting on others. And really then we've given guidance of moving to 25,000 tons of capacity by 2025 and 100,000 tons of capacity by end of the decade. And from all of our customer engagement programs, what we're hearing is the demand is clear and present for this material. It's what's being used in vehicles and energy storage systems today. And it's all coming from Asia. And we need to scale this capacity to large volumes that be contracted by major OEMs as, as quickly as possible. So in the backbone of these companies is our team. So if we look at the next slide, you know, we're extremely excited to see the team growing and the ecosystem growing at the same time. So we've seen the electric vehicle market, General Motors has announced going all electric by 2035, Jaguar by 2025, Ford just yesterday announced uh, by 2030, they'll be all electric in Europe. And of course, in the United States where most of our activities are focused now, the change in administration, the Biden has put so much focus on clean green technologies and localizing the supply chain, which is what we want to do. We're bringing to market in the regional markets, lower cost, high performance materials to feed the cell manufacturers we're setting up. So on the next slide, I want to just run through, as I said in the outline, some of these really important announcements that have come out in the market in the last month or two. Uh, the first is 
a really high profile appointment of bringing Professor Jeff Dawn onto our team as a chief scientific advisor uh, starting July 1st. I did my PhD with, with Professor Dawn. He's worked for Tesla exclusively for the past five years through his partnership with Dalhousie University. He'll continue that relationship and they've added new professors to expand that work with Tesla. But as part of the new contract, he is working now also with Novonics as our chief scientific advisor. He'll be involved in our materials programs and some of our key customer initiatives. And his background is, is uh, extensive work in industry and academia, patents and, and paper applications around key materials, including some of the early cathode materials, uh, NMC patents in the early 2000s. So in addition to Professor Don on the next slide, uh, we also work with another university professor at that research group, Mark Oberbach. He also has a strong background in material synthesis and is growing his group. We've been working with him for the past two years. Uh, he is also a former Jeff Don PhD from, from 2001. And this relationship, which only started two, two and a half years ago, has already yielded IP that we're commercializing within our technology business around our dry particle microgranulation technology used for use in anodes as well as cathodes. And so we're excited to have announced that we've secured that sponsorship for a subsequent five years with funding support from the Canadian government. So these key team members are what help us build our new technology platforms and our new uh, commercial businesses. So on the next slide, you know, we look at partnership opportunities as well. This is focused around our pure graphite business specifically right now that we've set up a strategic alliance with Harper International on high temperature furnace technologies. Making synthetic graphite requires heating materials to upwards of 3000 degrees Celsius with highly specialized furnaces. And today's technology that's deployed primarily in China, but also globally, are 100 year old furnace systems that have regulatory potential regulatory issues coming on their inefficiency and emissions. And so when we set up Pure Graphite, we focused on how can we develop new technology around scalable, high efficiency furnace designs? And then who can we partner with to build those systems for us? And we've set this relationship up with Harper and we're starting now to install our generation two furnace systems at our plant in Tennessee, which will be servicing, as I mentioned earlier, our contract with Samsung. And on the next slide, you're starting to see this momentum around uh, recognition for our technology platforms. A lot with Harper, we've set up our generation two plant, which is coming online now, but we also have a longer term technology roadmap. And as part of that, we applied for funding with the US Department of Energy and received a $5.57 million US grant. The, the project team we put together was Philip 66, a world leader of petroleum coke materials, which is uh, one of the key feedstocks to synthetic graphite. Harper, our partner on furnace technology, and then of course, our US business with its IP around um, high performance uh, anode manufacturing and it being the first qualified supplier of material in the US. And the goal of this project is to develop and deploy what will be our third generation furnace system. And that first unit will be hitting the ground by the end of this year in Chattanooga as well. So it's an extremely exciting time for our pure graphite business moving our technology programs forward as we reach this point where we need to start scaling ra rapidly to meet the market demand for these materials. And as we move to the next slide, we're gonna look at two of our announcements around things that are in the pipeline and up and coming within Novonics. Because as I spoke about earlier on, our focus, our core competencies is in development of new technologies that we can apply to scalable markets. So our anode business was the first example of that. And as I talked about, we developed new cathode technologies uh, that started at the university and we own the patent rights to. And uh, when we look at this cathode manufacturing and cathode production represents about 30% of the cost of a battery. The thesis of our business is focusing on process innovation to decrease cost of key battery materials. Batteries today for vehicles, energy storage systems are great. The energy density is good. The cycle life is good. All of the things that used to be compromises for electric vehicles are starting to go away, except cost. So where we focus is how can we innovate on process technology to reduce cost? And the technology that we developed with the university around this dry particle microgranulation 
is a way to dramatically decrease the cost of input materials as well as the processing cost of what is the most expensive single part of the battery. So we've set up our first phase pilot line, which will be running this month to make our, our NMC products or NCA products through uh, this new processing. We've started expanding our staff and scope and capabilities, working on these high nickel class of materials, including NMC, NCA, as well as cobalt-free nickel-based cathodes, which are going to be part of the future very soon. And what we've started planning is our next phase of scaled up for pilot synthesis for larger volume demonstration. And all the materials that we're working on within this development program are being fed back through our technology business using that rapid research and development ecosystem. So in the same facility, we are making the materials, characterizing their physical properties, building them into full state-of-the-art lithium ion cells on, on a pilot line, and then using our advanced testing technology and other methods to evaluate their performance. And on the last slide, uh, the just this morning, we released announcement about our partnership with Amera Technologies. So as I said, our technology business focuses on where we can add value across the battery value chain into new scalable opportunities. And Amera is an, a util, an energy utility company focused on deploying community microgrids. And we've partnered with them to design, develop, and go into manufacturing of residential energy storage systems to deploy across North America. So this is a really exciting new market, large opportunity that we're just at the beginning of as we will start to see energy storage systems become a huge part of lithium ion growth over the coming years. And so the last slide, uh, I won't dwell on because I wanna take some time for questions because, but it's a summary of how our team is growing with key research people, which is the foundation of our business. It's leading to our technology innovation, which we're showing and deploying through our pure graphite business now and also leading to our opportunities to create new businesses such as our cathode development program going through commercialization and this partnership with Amera. So with that, I wanna leave some time for a couple of questions. Thanks, Chris. Um, and there always is questions. Uh, we've got a couple of technical ones and then probably one about uh, financials. Um, let me see. Uh, so how are you managing the kind of demand pressure for your product giving the, given the surge in EV forecasts? So I think this is a, a really important thing to understand, right? We are focused uh, today on current materials in the supply chain. You know, we have initiatives on future materials, lithium-based chemistries, non-lithium ion chemistries, but right now the world needs much greater supply and much lower cost access to these materials. And what, you know, this question hits, hits exactly a key point. We're seeing demand from all angles for sources of these types of materials that meet the performance specs that ours do uh, outside of China. And we've worked over the past three or four years to position that pure graphite business to be exactly where it is today. Qualified products, ready to scale, multiple customer engagements. And now it's about filling that filling that um, customer need and scaling up our plant in the US. I mean, we've got some really smart questions here. Um, Citigroup's recent EV report states that silicon will be the likely material of choice for anode going forward. Why do you believe that synthetic graphite is the way to go? Sure, so, you know, people have been talking about silicon and solid state chemistries for 10 years, um, and they will have a home in the battery market but what people have to realize is a few things, right? The, the importance of cost cannot be understated. So if any of these new technologies, whether they're silicon uh, or I'm, I'm sure solid state probably makes its way into that city, city report at some point, if when they're ready and meet the technical requirements of these applications, if they're not cheaper than today's technology, they will not gain adoption. Uh, and the other thing to appreciate is that there will be different chemistries for different use cases. Uh, all vehicles do not need the same materials in them. And you will see, of course, more silicon being included with graphite in the anode it's already used today. But even at Tesla's battery day, they talk about vehicle applications that require nickel cathodes and some that will require iron-based cathodes because the demands for energy density, life, performance, rate are all different depending on the applications. But I think there's no question graphite is going to continue to play a key role 
in not just vehicles, but also energy storage, which will become a huge part of the demand curve moving forward as well. Because the proven technology hitting these life cycles is important. And if you believe in the uh, moving to autonomous vehicles, you know, and the vision of, of robotic taxis, then suddenly the, the milestone has moved from being able to reach 800 or 1,000 cycles being applicable for vehicle applications to many thousands of cycles. And the premise of a million mile battery is paramount. And these other technologies just aren't there. Thanks, Chris. And, and just finally, there's a, a general question here around your, your balance sheet, your cash burn and the revenue outlook. Sure. So a few comments. We've raised capital about uh, eight months ago to convert, uh, pay back all of our convertible notes, uh, have no debt remaining on the balance sheet and are funded through building this 2000 ton plant. As we've indicated in some announcements, we'll be delivering material volume material to Samsung in the later half of this year. Uh, and that's when we really when the pure graphite business will start to ramp up its, uh, its throughput and uh, revenue numbers. And so, you know, we're funded well through that. Our burn rate is modest, uh, but we'll need capital to expand when we're ready to move forward with the pure graphite business and move toward these 10 and 25,000 ton milestones that, that are in our future. And, and finally, what, what would you say is the uh, question here? What's the biggest opportunity for Novonics in the next 24 months? Certainly in the next 24 months, it's going to be deploying scale within our pure graphite business, right? But as we think about the company, we are, this, we are a diversified technology company across the battery value chain. So as we scale our, our graphite technology, right behind that, we wanna be commercializing our cathode technology. And in parallel to that, we're gonna be bringing on um, the, the supply of these energy storage systems uh, for Amero, hopefully. And so, we will continue to diversify our revenue streams, all rooted in things that we've developed through our core research and development ecosystem. And then there'll be more in the pipeline after that. But the immediate future, we'll see huge growth in pure graphite first.